Okay, so uh, yesterday I was reading comments and a couple of guys actually said that they enjoyed looking out the front window of my tractor. And to just prop that camera up there and they'd watch it all day long. Well, I can't justify all day long. It actually, there's two hours and 25 minutes of footage compressed down to 8 minutes, 39 seconds, 39.19 seconds. I just ate my lunch, so I got a little bit of a hiccup going on there. But anyway, um, yeah, there's been a lot of questions going around lately um, with just a whole host of different subjects. The one I can that comes to my forefront of my mind is uh, what happened in Las Vegas, Nevada and how I feel about it. Well, I think I feel like 99.99% of the people that uh, were born and raised in this country uh, with the freedom and the rights to keep and bear arms, that this guy was a fucking nut, and he is now going to cost us some more freedoms because of his selfish actions, uh, heinous actions. I mean, just absolutely no rhyme or reason for it, and that's why this sort of thing happened. Um, I was always told by my father, if you want to get away with something, don't tell anybody anything about what you're about to do or what you have done, and you will get away with it. And, you know, not like I ever did that or anything, but, you know, it's just the truth. I mean, if you're going to do something, it's just shut up, you know, and he successfully did that. He didn't tell his girlfriend. He didn't tell his family. He didn't tell his friends. He didn't tell the gun store that maybe he was planning any of this stuff. And he carried out a very heinous crime where 58 people lost their lives and hundreds and hundreds of others were maybe, you know, well, their lives are changed forever. Even if it was just a graze wound or a through and through their, their lives are changed forever. So, um, I condemn that sort of activity. I am a gun owner. Um, I actually like to go shoot target practice, long range, and other things like that that you do not see on YouTube because I keep it to myself. Um, you know, and things like that. Uh, other things from the, uh, the arguments that I've been having with ELM, I will just use his name there. Uh, I contacted him yesterday and had a fairly decent con conversation with him. Um, it was basically, hey, what, what's your problem? You know, what is your problem with me is exactly what I said. And, uh, he said that he really didn't have a problem with me other than what I said about his wife. And, uh, you know, I told him that, um, you know, um, I, I was just retaliating for what he had done to me and, uh, it was childish and uncalled for. And, uh, you know, that's that it'll be the end. I made a deal with him. You leave me alone. I leave you alone. So the ELM thing I believe has gone by the wayside. Uh, yeah, some other questions are, how many bales do I think I'm going to get by the end of the year? Well, what I think I'm going to top off at is somewhere is around 12,000. I'm hoping to be above 12,000, but I'd be, I'd be more than happy with just, say, 12,000. And uh, I think I'm going to hit that without too much trouble. Um, other questions are, like, would you ever buy a New Holland or a uh, Case Tractor? Well, the answer to that is probably not. Um, I always wanted the uh, the TV-145, which is the uh, bi-directional tractor, but I have overgrown or outgrown its usefulness on my farm, so it's not even uh, a glimmer in my eye. Telehandlers, same thing. Just really don't have that much of a use for them. So, you know, that's that's not going to happen. Uh, politically, um, you know, also been asked about Donald Trump. What do I think of Donald Trump? Well, you know what? We've had the last, uh, say, 30 years of pretty piss poor politics. You know, I mean, we get into politics and stuff. Uh, Donald Trump isn't standing up there saying, we're going to go into Mosul in four weeks. You know, he says what he, he does what he says. He says what he does. And that's just the end of it. I kind of like that. Um, you know, I don't want to uh, a leader that says, well, we're going to do this. And, uh, you know, the enemy knows that we're going to do that because our leader, the stupid ass that he was, stood up and said, we're going to do this. Uh, I'd rather have the, uh, you know, all the signs there that things are going to have bad things are going to happen unless we intervene. And uh, I hear about it on the nightly news, like when I was in, you know, when I was in high school and we went into Kuwait. And I was in high school when that happened. It was very scary because I was—I I didn't want to go to war. I didn't think our, our country needed to go to war. But we also didn't need Saddam Hussein in another country. He would have just been like another Adolf Hitler taking over 
small countries for his own, you know, for his own profit. So what I would have liked to have seen was it end there and we take him out back in the first Gulf War because, quite honestly, we have had endless wars since that invasion. Uh, so, you know, that's just my thoughts on that. Um, yeah, uh, we got plenty of oil here in this country that to support us and uh, for many, many years. I was in a coal mine a bunch of years ago and, uh, well, let's see, it was... It was my anniversary, so it was back in 2003, today in 2003, that I was in the Lackawanna coal mines and went on a coal mine tour and they said, with the coal that is in the ground in Pennsylvania alone, we have 500 years of fuel at current use in Pennsylvania alone. That leaves out Wyoming, Ohio, all these other coal mine states, you know, Virginia, West Virginia, all those coal mine states are, you know, there's there's literally thousands of years worth of energy still in the ground in the form of coal. So, you know, do we really need to be fighting wars over oil when you can go up to, say, North and South Dakota and just pump it? in Wyoming. I mean, I've been out there. I've seen the oil oil rigs and stuff. So, you know, bring our boys back, you know, defend our own country, kind of become uh, an independent, uh, like we're supposed to be independent from the rest of the world. Uh, I don't say, you know, be a recluse, but, you know, we don't need to de- to rely on a bunch of towel heads that want to kill us. You know, we just don't need to be there. So I'm hoping you're enjoying this um, cab view or window view of my my tractor here because it it really was three you know over two and like two and a half hours of footage um and in the title it says for those who can't and that's exactly what this is this video is for all the guys that can't currently be in a tractor and are say overseas in singapore or anywhere in the world Uh, i jammed it up there that's why i stop you get going at such a rate of speed, and you'll get a wet spot or a clump in the hay. And these windrows really are monster, monster windrows. So, yeah. And it's the crone is working wonderfully. I have, you know, my $9,000 uh, front end is now where it needs to be uh, fixed. And uh, we're good to go. So, down the road I go. I'm going to go on to the next farm. Uh, Desperado has decided that he's going to farm some ground and he ended up in the hospital and he had no way of getting his hay made so his daughter called me up and said hey Wesley can you come and bale this hay of course I had to rake it and bale it but that's where I'm going now I'm going to do a favor for my friends and uh, you know because one hand washes the other around here if you have somebody that you know you're friends with and they they have a problem like George had, and, uh, you know, hey, just could you please help me out? And uh, life is good. We help one another out, and hopefully he will be back in the saddle again, Mr. Desperado, and making hay for his daughter's beef herd, and that's the end of that. Hope you enjoyed it. Please comment, rate, and subscribe.